Welcome to the first ever episode of Spotlight with Rai. I'm your host, Rai Chatterjee, and in this series, I will be putting a spotlight on interesting personalities who are thought leaders and change makers in their respective fields. For the first episode, we have arrived in beautiful Basingstoke, which is the birthplace of renowned novelist Jane Austen, as well as luxury brand Burberry. And I have arrived here to speak with a dynamic and prominent politician who has served as the Secretary of State for Culture, Media and Sport, as well as Minister for Women and Equalities in former Prime Minister David Cameron's cabinet a true blue Conservative MP at heart, who was recently appointed Dame for her public and parliamentary services in 2022. You guessed it right, I am here to put the spotlight on Right Honourable MP for Basingstoke, Dame Maria Miller. Lovely to have you, Maria, uh, on our show. Uh, you know, I've always had a personal interest in your journey, not only because you're the MP for Basingstoke, but also because we both went to the same university, the London School of Economics. So may I add that seeing a fellow LSE alumnus uh, at the forefront of governance and policy decisions is a moment of personal pride for me. And to continue with that note, uh, you've had a very successful corporate career as well. So what prompted you to join politics? Was there any particular incident or even a penny dropping moment as such? So when I was at the LSE, probably a, lo a number of years before you were, um, I became absolutely fascinated by um, the difference between um, the opportunities that people had uh, mm -hmm. when they were at school. Yeah. Um, when I was at university at the LSE, there were very few people like me, uh, very few women, mm -hmm. um, and very few people who come from a comprehensive school like the one I went to in South Wales. Mm -hmm. And I just thought that was fundamentally unfair, and I wanted everybody to have the opportunities I'd had. Uh, and I know also that's down to my parents too, and that's maybe not something you can legislate for, but I just wanted people to have opportunities. So really I got involved in politics at the LSE, and I continued that interest, albeit not at a, you know, uh, as a job, mm -hmm. uh, really until I entered Parliament. So it was a lifelong interest. Mm -hmm. And absolutely, Maria, you have been a champion of equality throughout your career as an MP. And uh, especially at this moment, I would like to uh, tell our viewers who may not be aware that it was you who brought about historic change to the Constitution of Britain by introducing the Same-Sex Couples Act in 2013, uh, which is also known as the Marriage Act of 2013. And this was when you were Minister of Women and Equalities in uh, Prime Minister David Cameron's uh, cabinet. It. What was your motivation behind introducing this act? And as allies, what can we further expect to see down the road in terms of parliamentary legislation? Um, so the Equal Marriage Act that I was really you know, privileged to bring in meant that we were treating all couples the same. And that really was my motivation behind the legislation, that we should be treating everybody the same. And, and to be honest, I mean, I've been married for more than 30 years feels like a long time now and I just think it's a great thing for everybody and if we can encourage and support more people to be married if they're in same-sex couples or or um, or not not then that shouldn't really matter the state shouldn't really draw a differentiation between uh, the types of relationships that people w are in mm -hmm. so that was my motivation behind it it was tough yeah. because it was challenging people's um, preconceived ideas mm -hmm. but do you know what it's the one thing that I've done as an MP that to this day people will come up to me on the street who, who I've never met before and say you know I'm I'm gay I want to be in a relationship I might not be intending to get married mm -hmm. but that piece of legislation demonstrated the state values me as much as they value somebody else um, and for me that was a really important part of what we were trying to do with that legislation uh, but for me the uh, issues around equality and giving people the same opportunity are still there mm -hmm. um, particularly for women and so my focus is very much on that at the moment and how we make sure that particularly women in the workplace have the same opportunities as men 
Our gender pay gap reporting, uh, which came in when I was a minister as well, has helped expose that gender pay gap is still very much there, particularly for women over the age of 40. So my concern, and one of the things I'm campaigning for in Basingstoke, is to make sure that we have access to childcare, good mm -hmm. quality childcare, so that women can, with confidence, go back into the workplace after they've had a, a little one and that they can continue their careers. They aren't forced out of work, but it also requires us to modernise work placement, you know, the workplace and also jobs Absolutely. to make sure there are more good quality, flexible jobs, because it's often a flexible job that will really help women stay in the workplace. Yep. And of course, when we speak about equality, we should start with the home of democracy and equality itself, the Houses of Parliament. Uh, and recently, as you know, Theresa May has announced that she will be stepping down as an MP in the upcoming general election. So this, again, put the focus back on the number of women in Parliament. At the moment, uh, out of a total of 650 MPs, only 225 are women, which is 35%. So with, again, Theresa May stepping down, that will mean potentially one less MP representing uh, circa 51% of the British population who are women. So how does this impact your legislation in Parliament and are there any particular issues that are really hard to bring to the forefront? Do you have any examples? Having women in Parliament really matters. Mm -hmm. It changes the conversation. Yeah. It means that issues that uh, may not be discussed are, are become more prominent. I mean, women and men have sort of got the same priorities in life, mm -hmm. but they're often in a different order, and they're definitely seen through a different lens. Yeah. So having more women in Parliament couldn't be more important. And um, I'm really proud that I was the first woman to be elected to represent a North Hampshire seat, mm -hmm. but I'm really sad that I'm the only woman to have ever been elected to serve a North Hampshire seat because no other women have been elected since I was elected back in uh, 2005. So yeah. there is still a way to go and Theresa May standing down I'm terribly sad and about because for, for me she was, she is, an incredible mm -hmm. role model. I had the privilege of working alongside her when she was Home Secretary mm -hmm. um, in David Cameron's cabinet uh, but also I've worked alongside her on reviewing the domestic abuse bill. I was the chair of the joint committee uh, that reviewed that and also working on a review of the modern slavery legislation which is really what she's going to be working on when she retires from Parliament because she, she won't be retiring from um, doing the good work that she does. The real focus is on how do we get more women to want to become parliamentarians mm -hmm. and for me that is the big challenge because too many women see the downsides mm -hmm. of standing for election, uh, the online abuse and also the physical threats that women can now too often face. Um, so we have to tackle that. The online safety bill will be a a real help um, in terms of Ofcom coming in and regulating that environment and we now take the personal safety of MPs much more seriously. But you know what, I, I think there are amazing tenacious women, whether it's in Basingstoke or whether it's broader across the country, who make amazing MPs. So I spend a lot of my time working with my own party but also organisations like 5050 Parliament to encourage more women to apply to stand as candidates for local government, for national government, um, and to tell them, yes, there are issues there around online abuse. Let's not be, you know, let's be honest about that. Mm -hmm. But actually, what you can do to affect change is phenomenal. And if I think of the things that I've been able to do as a, mem a member of parliament, you've mentioned some of them already, but, you know, I... I I was one of the people who helped change the online safety bill so that we could make it a crime mm -hmm. um, if people post uh, intimate or sexualized images without the consent of the person concerned. Um, I also helped bring in relationship and sex education as a mandatory um, requirement for all school age children, mm -hmm. really in response to the challenges they now see mm -hmm. online. Um, and, and the list goes on. You know, real change you can make in your community. I'm campaigning for a hospital in Basingstoke, which we now have fully funded by um, fully funded by the government and will be opening its doors in 2030. 
um, as well as the other things that I'm campaigning on with regards to cutting house building in my community and also making sure we can have enough childcare places so you can affect real change and I think that really appeals to women. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't want to sit there and just talk about things, we want to do things. Getting more women to stand for election is an absolute passion of mine and to try and address some of the concerns people have about um, standing for election and perhaps you know the abuse they might um, encounter. I've also this time round launched with Harriet Harman, who's a Labour member of Parliament, a pledge that I'm hoping every single candidate will will sign up to, which is to treat each other with respect, use respectful language, um, and to you know really call out any misogyny that they encounter. So I think working together cross party, we can really affect a change there too. No, it's absolutely brilliant to see that you're going beyond politics and really impacting change by collaborating with your opposition party as well. Maria, since February 2024, you have become a member of the committee discussing the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association and International Committee of the Red Cross Bill. Um, you have also been an advocate for the Commonwealth and um, ethnic minorities in the UK. And personally, as a British citizen of Indian origin, I have seen the positive impact of the Commonwealth both here in the UK as well as in India when I lived there in my early years. So I have two questions. Uh, firstly, how can Britain continue to keep the Commonwealth relevant today uh, and going forward? Uh, as well as secondly, how can Britain really harness the soft power of the Commonwealth to help resolve international conflicts? I'm an enormous champion of the Commonwealth and I chair the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association here in the UK, which fosters relations between different Commonwealth parliaments because we're so similar and we've got a lot we can learn from each other. And the Commonwealth um, and uh, the Red Cross Act that you talked about is about giving proper recognition to that organisation or those two organisations mm -hmm. so that they can do their jobs even better in the future. But I'm also married to a Canadian, another great Commonwealth country. Oh. Um, so it is, uh, it really is dear at my heart. My children are all Canadian citizens. Mm -hmm. um, so it's something which I feel very, very passionately about. In Basingstoke, the Indian community particularly brings us an immense mm -hmm. um, strength, actually, to our community, both in terms of uh, cultural value, but also um, the jobs that are being filled by people from India and from many other Commonwealth countries. So I think in terms of making sure that we keep the Commonwealth relevant is by demonstrating actually we have a lot of shared values, a lot of shared history, and that's how we keep ourselves relevant for the future. Mm -hmm. When I go to um, parliaments as I, I do, I'm fortunate enough to do in places like Fiji or New Zealand, or indeed some of the provincial parliaments in Canada, mm -hmm. I, I see how the values that we have in the UK are reflected there and, and also in countries like India or indeed Bangladesh, where I've been to. Mm -hmm. And it, it matters that we can work together as par parliamentarians to keep our democracies strong. So I think that that for me will be a way that we can keep the Commonwealth relevant into the future. But I know how important the Commonwealth was to Her Late Majesty and is to His Majesty the King. Mm -hmm. And they very much see that as part of their role too, is to keep the Commonwealth values going mm -hmm. and the strength of our partnership as strong as it ever has been. Um, and I think the second part of your question is directly related to that because if you think about the, the soft power and how you can use that to try and help in conflict areas, maybe in Israel, Palestine or mm -hmm. indeed in, you know, further afield, many of our Commonwealth uh, partner countries mm -hmm. um, have a fantastic opportunity to do that. I was in Malta recently at a conference for women parliamentarians in the Commonwealth and I was hearing there about how they use their, you know, they're a small country, uh, they're sassy and they can come in and really be brokers for peace. Mm. Countries like um, Cyprus who've yeah. experienced the, the, the pain of 
separation that they have there in, in, in their nation and use that insight as a way of helping other countries that are looking to try and um, you know, develop and, and, and rebuild themselves in the future. So huge amount of expertise in there um, and I know that that and also um, the, just the, the, the love that we have for the Commonwealth will keep it going strong in the future. Now coming to Basingstoke, which is your constituency. So a simple question, what is your plan for Basingstoke? How do you wish to see it develop in the next five years? Well, I think Basingstoke is a fantastic place to live. A community spirit of Basingstoke is what makes it so strong. Mm -hmm. uh, we may be a very large town now, mm -hmm. but when you go into the town centre, you meet people you know. Mm -hmm. It's still very much a community brought together um, in, its, in, in its many different constituent parts. Mm -hmm. um, so my plan for Basingstoke is I want to see it have an opportunity to maybe pause a little bit in terms of its growth. We've mm -hmm. seen a huge amount of growth in the last 40 years. Mm -hmm. We've seen many, many thousands of people move into our community. In fact, since the 60s, we've seen homes for 150,000 people built. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the equivalent of a town the size of Salisbury being built three times in the last 60 years. That's immense growth. We need a time to pause, to consider to make sure we've got really strong social cohesion within our town, within all of the different communities. And we also need to make sure that all of our services have caught up with the rapid growth we've seen. Never more so than in the NHS, mm -hmm. which is uh, the most important local public service. Yep. And our hospital was built in the 70s when our town was a very different place. Um, I'm so delighted that we have funding now to secure a new hospital for Basingstoke, which will be a game changer for us in terms of supporting this much, much larger town. So that's my vision for the future, to make sure we continue to be the success we are, one of the uh, top 10 centres of employment in the southeast with um, a thousand jobs which we need people to fill, but that we don't continue to so rapidly expand our housing Mm -hmm. um, that you know we have time to breathe, let our NHS services catch up um, and we continue to be a great place to live. And of course we cannot end uh, without talking about the upcoming general election. So I won't ask you any particular details on the time frame of the election unless you want to share anything with our viewers, but um, what is the Conservative government offering for the next five years that Labour isn't? Well, I think that the uh, very clear opportunity in Basingstoke is for us to, as I say, to catch our breath mm -hmm. and to make sure that everything that we're doing here is pulling our great town together so that we can be incredibly successful into the future, that we're attracting the right sort of jobs into our community so that people have got good quality jobs, high paying jobs, so that they can live in um, an amazing town. And I think what the Conservative government is already doing is supporting that by making sure that we have investment coming into our town, new companies uh, making Basingstoke their home, the investment that was put into Basingview to achieve that uh, was, was really, is really quite fundamental to the very good position we're in now. But what the Conservative government is already doing um, and is realising is that you know, people are finding uh, life tough in terms of the finances mm -hmm. of life. You know, the cost of living has gone up. The yeah. cost of living in a town like Basingstoke has gone up. So rather than looking at taking more money out of our pay packets in tax, uh, we're looking at trying to cut taxes to make sure that more money is there for families to spend. Mm -hmm. And what I think is even more important for Basingstoke residents who on average are two working parents um, and therefore childcare is very important. It's a Conservative government that is also doubling the amount of free childcare that's available for children before they start school. So a reduction in tax, more free childcare and more companies coming to our town because of the investment we've seen in Basingview and our roads and our other services, I think is exactly what Bas Basingstoke residents want to see to keep our town successful for the future. And that's what they're hearing from the Conservative government already. That's what the plans are for the future. 
and I think really that plan, that long-term plan for our community, I, I don't want to see that changed and I hope voters will agree with me mm -hmm. um, and vote for the Conservatives to stay in government. Absolutely. And Maria, thank you so much for doing this interview. I really appreciate that before the general election, you have a lot on plate, uh, but I wish you all the very best. Well, as a fellow LSE graduate, <laughs> I, I couldn't do anything less. And thank you so much for taking the time to interview me. Thank you so much, Maria. Thanks a lot.